Good afternoon, Grace Baptist. It's good to see you this week for our sermon follow-up as we've come to the end of the book of Ruth, and we've spent four weeks kind of off and on in Ruth and just kind of walking through that book. And you know, Matt, it's been it's been interesting. I've always liked the book of Ruth. I've, mm-hmm. I've just enjoyed the, the story. It's, it's really a beautiful story. Um, but it's been interesting how many people um, have talked to me through this story or through the series about how much they enjoy the story of Ruth, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize that. I, don't, I guess I've never just talked to people about the Book of Ruth that often, <laughs> but um, but a lot of people just like Ruth, and and the messages and, and what we looked at. You know, the four stories we talked about: mm-hmm. a story of suffering, a story of providence, a story of redemption, and then a story in His story, mm-hmm. and that it just resonated uh, with people. Why is it that the message of the book of Ruth, do you think, just resonates with us, that, that we are drawn to such a, a beautiful story? What is it about that that stands out to us, Matt? You know, I, I really believe it's the same reason why we're drawn to the Psalms, because of the human emotion into it, and, mm-hmm. and that Scripture doesn't just paint a rosy picture. Yeah. It gives us a real picture of real people with real hurt mm-hmm. and real despair, and real feelings of hopelessness. Yeah. And doesn't leave us there though. Right. Gives us real hope. Yeah, hope in the midst of hopelessness. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But it's real. It's not sugarcoating anything because we live in a fallen world. Mm-hmm. And because of that, we see people around us who are just suffering and yeah. in pain and they're looking for something. They're looking for someone and because they're they're wrestling with their sin, they're wrestling with the effects of sin. And so they, they want something to cling mm-hmm. to. And so I really think that's why we gra- grab at that. We grab at Ruth. We grab at the yeah. Psalms in times of desperation mm-hmm. because it acknowledges the truth of how we're feeling and what we're going through, yeah. but it doesn't leave us there. Yeah, and we, you know, we, we're in a time right now with so much going on, whether it's you know, just the, the difficulties of, of things going on in our country, race mm-hmm. relations with... Um, the the topic of abortion with all the the political unrest the COVID everything going on but then you know in our personal lives you know people are walking through suffering uh, chronic pain uh, death and and just brokenness in homes that there's just a lot of uh, things going on whether it's in our church body or in the lives of people around us in our community and you know I can't help but think back on how you know in chapter one when Naomi, you know, says, you know, to to Orpha and, and to Ruth to, to stay, you know, just stay, go back to your people, go back to your gods. I'm going home, and Ruth clings to her, and there's something that she's seen. We don't know what it is. Yeah. But I, I can't help but think about you know, there's something in Naomi that Ruth has seen, even in the midst of the tragedy, that makes her want to follow Naomi, mm-hmm. makes her want to cling to her God, mm-hmm. and Naomi was honest and transparent, like he said, with her feelings about what had what had gone on, the suffering. But there was something missed. She still clung to her faith. And I, and I think that's one thing that we need to be aware of as we go through the difficulties of the pandemic and political unrest, all those things we just mentioned. We need to be aware of what our testimony is. Does it mm-hmm. are we leading our lives in such a way? Are we are we speaking in such a way? Whether that's at the coffee shop or whether it's on social media that causes people to want to follow our God and want to be near us in the midst of difficulty or are we not you know uh, I think it's a question we have to ask yeah. uh, how 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 do we kind of lead people away or to the Lord in these times I don't know if that makes sense that is kind of a question so if we're if we want to be a people who draw others to the Lord in the midst of difficulty and suffering mm-hmm. What do you think it takes to do that as opposed to a person who just kind of pushes others away or just becomes another voice complaining and grumbling and griping about the circumstances we're in? Well, I think you and I kind of grew up in a generation where the little byline was, it's easy to praise God in the end zone when you've made the winning touchdown. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy when you're the one who's messed it up and lost the game. Yeah. And so I think in those moments we can push people away from the Lord and give a bad picture of the Lord in how we respond to suffering. Mm-hmm. We were never told we weren't going to suffer. We yeah. were told when, 
right. you suffer to count it all joy. And James tells us that. Mm-hmm. So how we respond in that moment. But I don't think that means we have to respond perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Because I think there's the danger too is we can say, oh, I'm okay, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. And then we paint this false picture yeah. and then we lose credibility there and push people yeah. away. Like, well, apparently I'm not spiritual enough or I'm really mm-hmm. messed up to the point that I can't be like this person yeah. over here. And I don't so, think Naomi necessarily no. responded perfectly. She... You know, she was like, God's against me. We talked about that's probably not an accurate statement that she makes there. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, oh, no, I mean, no, that's, that's yeah. right. But I think that, that's the point is that yeah. she was honest mm-hmm. and there was grace yeah. that, given by God in her honesty. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you see that throughout the Psalms too. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Psalms. And then Jesus quoting that. Mm-hmm. And then you see in Psalm 42 where... Why are you downcast, my soul? You know, hope in God. It's just yeah. back and forth, back and forth. But I, the way we can draw people to the Lord is how we respond in suffering. Mm-hmm. Because people have this idea that Christians have the perfect life. And once you become a believer, everything's great. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes that's not the case. Yeah. It's actually yeah. harder at times. Right. And, and so we can draw people to the Lord by pointing them to Jesus in the midst of suffering, mm-hmm. in the way we speak. Yeah. Uh, one thing that really struck me in the midst of suffering is being able to say, you know what, I'm going through a hard time. I admit the tragedy. I admit mm-hmm. what's going on. I mean, I'm saying, you know what, but nothing of God's character changes yeah. in this. Yeah. And I think the way we can do that is rooting ourselves in what we know mm-hmm. and not what we're feeling. Yeah. We need to constantly keep truth yeah. before our minds so that it informs us. Yeah. We need to be memorizing Scripture so the Spirit draws that mm-hmm. to mind in the midst of suffering, mm-hmm. because in the midst of that, we're we're clouded, yeah. and we don't we're not thinking clearly. Yeah. But if we're reminded of our truth, it reorients us right. to who God is, because He never changes, yeah. and He's just as holy now as He was then. Mm-hmm. He's just as righteous now as He was then. He's just yeah. as good, and, and so on. It just keeps going, mm-hmm. and so I think that's how we can draw people there is, is the way we talk about God. Yeah. The way we process through our suffering in front of them, not perfectly, yeah. not in a fake way, but real, but real, real. Yeah. But tr- the tr- just as much as the tragedy is real, yeah. the truth is real too. Yeah, you know it's interesting because tomorrow night we're looking, continuing our study in Psalm one nineteen, and we we don't study it real in depth on a Wednesday night in prayer gathering. I know you, you're back with the youth, but but tomorrow night we're going to look at a portion out of um, verses forty nine to fifty six. Psalm 119, he used that as a guided prayer time. He talks about um, you know, the, the attacks of the wicked, the insolent, and he, he said, I'm going to sing of, you know, sing of the word, the promises of the Lord. And in the midst of that, and something that stood out to me as I was preparing and studying today is, you know, we are those who can sing through suffering. And it's not always a happy-go-lucky fun song so it's a song of lament many times but we can sing through suffering because we know what we're going to look at this Sunday and you know, this Sunday we have a very natural step from Ruth <laughs> yeah. and the genealogy of verses 18 to 22 that just steps right into the genealogy that Matthew starts his gospel with as we start studying Matthew and we can sing through suffering because we know that like we said in the first sermon suffering's not final God has the final word, and so when Matthew opens his gospel up and it uses that same genealogy, we see God's beautiful providence that's, that is flowered, in the words of, of William Cowper, uh, is flowered into something that's just absolutely amazing to see God's plan. And so, so we sing through suffering. There's hope in the midst of hopelessness, uh, but we need to be real uh, with our suffering. So, I, I mean, I, I just hope and pray. I know we talked about this um, several times as pastors that, that as a people uh, that we would be a people who who grieve and are honest with difficulties in life and walk through those in a way that glorifies God because the suffering is real yeah. uh, it's hard and it's something that we go through and that many of our people are through are going through right now so know that your pastors are praying for you uh, and we pray that you would trust the Lord and that he would grant you hope in the midst of hopelessness we hope this is been a good study for you. We look forward to jumping into Matthew this week, and uh, we will pick up basically right where we left off in the genealogy, <laughs> just a little yeah. uh, continuation and a, a bigger view of it and what it what it led to. Uh, but we'll see you on Sunday. Matt, will you close us in prayer? Absolutely. Let's pray together. Father, we are thankful that we serve a God who is sovereign and good and holy and righteous and just. Father, we are 
so thankful that there is no shadow of turning with with you as we sing in the song great is thy faithfulness father our circumstances change but you do not you are glorious and great and we are thankful for the provision that you have shown to us through your care for Naomi and Ruth and how that has continued as we see in the book of Matthew and has continued to us in 2021 father for those who are hurting right now God be their God of comfort and help them to glorify you in suffering for those who are getting ready to suffer God prepare them now Lord to suffer for your name's sake and for your glory and for their good Father, thank you so much for loving us in the good times and the bad times and the times, Lord, in between. You are worthy of our praise because of who you are and what you do. Father, we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you either Wednesday or Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.